Decades after his father mysteriously disappeared, a man made a disturbing discovery in his basement. In 1961, George Carroll mysteriously disappeared from his Long Island residence, never to be seen again. His vanishing haunted his four children for decades after. And it wasn't until almost six decades later that George's youngest son, Mike, made a shocking discovery in the basement of the Carroll family home. George was born back in 1934. When he had grown up, he fought in the Korean War, which took place between 1950 and 1953. However, by 1961, George had settled in Lake Grove, Long Island, in the state of New York. There, he lived in a little house on a suburban road named Olive Street. By that point, the Carroll family consisted of George, his wife Dorothy, and their four children, Patricia, Jean, Stephen, and Mike. The Carroll kids were all fairly young in 1961. The eldest, Patricia, was nine years old, while the youngest, Mike, had been born just a few months earlier. However, despite their tender ages, the year would have a huge impact on the Carroll children. In many ways, 1961 was a year to remember. World events that occurred that year included President John F. Kennedy becoming inaugurated as the United States 35th president in January. Furthermore, just a few months later, in April, Soviet cosmonaut Yuri Gagarin became the first human to travel into space. However, while both these events were significant in terms of history, it was happenings closer to home that would affect the Carroll children the most. That's because in 1961, their father, George, disappeared from their family home, never to return. Moreover, all he left in his wake was a trail of unanswered questions. After George went missing, his wife, Dorothy, told their children that their father had left the house to buy cigarettes one night and had never come home. Mysteriously, though, he'd forgotten to take his wallet. Given the curiosities of Dorothy's account, her son Mike, who was just eight months old at the time of his dad's disappearance, never quite bought it. But while they were dogged with questions, Mike and his siblings got little in the way of answers from their mother, Dorothy. Revealing his mom's reluctance to talk about his missing dad in November 2018, Mike explained to the New York Post, I was always told, don't ask, so I stopped asking. With their dad's disappearance seemingly shrouded in secrecy, rumors in the Carroll family were rife. Some relatives reportedly believed that Mike had fled his family and traveled to Korea, where he had fought a decade earlier. Meanwhile, a more sinister story suggested George was dead and buried beneath the family's basement, which was being constructed at the time of his disappearance. It was later alleged that no one had filed a missing persons report in the wake of George's disappearance. As a result, his vanishing likely slipped under the radar of the relevant authorities. And soon his family began to move on, despite the unanswered questions they had about George's departure. Not long after George vanished, a man called Richard Darris moved into the Carroll family home. He later became Dorothy's second husband, and the pair eventually had a baby boy together. However, this wasn't a happy ending for the mother of four, and her marriage to Richard fell apart later. Dorothy filed for divorce from her second husband in 1983. Her relationship with Richard had seemingly soured in the two decades after he joined the Carroll family home. In fact, Dorothy suspected Richard had been unfaithful to her, and at some point in the late 1970s, she had asked him to move out. After his divorce from Dorothy, Richard reportedly moved to Nuevo Laredo in Mexico. The city lies close to the U.S. border, just south of the state of Texas. Richard later remarried. However, Fox News obtained court records that allegedly revealed that woman had got a temporary protection order against Richard in 2000 before their divorce. Meanwhile, as the Carroll children got older, their mother Dorothy maintained her theory that George had abandoned them. As a result, they stopped asking questions for a while. There really wasn't much to talk about, her son Stephen told WABC in November 2018, but we became curious as adults as to where he might be. Richard eventually died in June 2018, age 77. 
Meanwhile, his former wife Dorothy passed away in 1998. Before his mother died, her youngest son with first husband George, Mike, purchased the Carroll family home on Olive Street. He lived there for almost two decades before he began to wonder if his father really could be buried below in his basement. Speaking of the rumors regarding his dad's final resting place in the family's basement, Mike told WABC, it didn't just come up overnight, it's something that's been talked about for years. He added more detail about the talk, saying, this is something as we grow up, you know, you heard multiple stories. Consequently, in the mid-2010s, Mike decided he would excavate his basement. However, shortly after the work began, he was forced to abandon his plans. I was actually digging in the wrong spot, Mike told News 12. So I got to the point where it became dangerous because I was afraid my house was going to cave in. So I stopped digging. But Mike and his family never gave up on their search for the truth. With that in mind, the Carroll family later resumed their search for George's rumored remains. This time, though, they employed a range of experts in a bid to help them locate any clues. All the while, Mike did all the hard labor himself, painstakingly lifting the heavy concrete basement floor piece by piece. Among the experts Mike enlisted was someone who worked with ground-penetrating radar. The technology uses electromagnetic radiation, which scans below ground to build a picture of subsurface structures. And when used in the Carroll's basement, it detected a mass six feet under the concrete floor. At another point in his search, Mike turned to a psychic for help, on the advice of one of his sisters. And while as a professional respiratory therapist, Mike was a proponent of science, he was willing to hear a clairvoyant out. There is, of course, premonitions, gut feelings, things like that, he admitted to the New York Post. Speaking to News 12, Mike later revealed he'd seen spirits in his home as a child. And in another spooky story, he had, My friend came from Georgia and he said, Mike, I came out of your bathroom and I saw a guy standing there, like, you know, a shadow of a man, standing and walking down the stairs. However, cementing his status as a skeptic, Mike concluded, But that's neither here nor there. Revealing what happened during the paranormal investigation, Mike told the New York Post, There was a guy who came to my basement and he went to the right spot and said, The energy's here. By this point, Mike had unfortunately suffered a stroke. As a result, he had his adult sons, Christopher and Michael Jr., take over the search. In late 2018, Mike told local television channel News 12 how his sons had become involved in the search. I told my kids, Guys, come on over here and help me out. You've been watching me do this. You get in there, he explained. I think they felt bad for me because they knew how important this was to me. It was while they were digging in the spot picked out by the psychic that Mike's sons finally made a breakthrough. There, several feet under the ground, Christopher and Michael Jr. found something that they believed to be of interest. They alerted their father, who came rushing down to the basement from upstairs. Mike later told News 12, it's not easy for me to get up and down the stairs, but despite his limited mobility, he was eager to get a closer look. I actually did get into the hole where they were digging, he revealed. As a result, Mike recognized the unearthed objects as the remains of a human being. Later, Mike described the grim sight of the human bones to the New York Post. They were twisted in a knot, weird looking, he explained. It was down and twisted in the dirt, not totally exposed either. Mike ensured his siblings were the first to know about the discovery. And the day after, which happened to be Halloween, they informed the police. The Suffolk County Police Department couldn't immediately confirm the origin of the bones. However, the cops did reveal that they looked human. With that said, they would need to carry out DNA testing and potentially analyze dental records before they could say for certain who or what the bones belonged to. But even without such confirmation, Mike was sure the remains were those of his father, George. It's going to be my dad, he confidently told the New York Post. And revealing that he was able to look on the discovery positively, Mike added, this is going to be a great thing for him, to be emancipated from that place where he didn't belong. For Mike, the discovery of the unidentified bones left him with a feeling of total peace. Elaborating on the emotions at the time, he told News 12, I felt vindication for my dad. I felt like he was dancing in heaven. So his sense of closure must have been strengthened when experts confirmed the remains did indeed belong to his father. In December 2018, officials from Suffolk County announced that the skeleton was George's. Michael Kaplan, a medical examiner for the county, told Newsday, 
The DNA was extremely well preserved within these skeletal remains even after almost 60 years. Consequently, six decades after his disappearance, Mike and his siblings had finally found their father. Mike was happy to have gotten answers to some of the questions that had haunted him for so long. He explained to News 12, I took a chance. I could have done this whole thing and found nothing, but then I would have had a whole messed up basement. He added, I have a messed up basement, but I'm really glad we found what we found. It puts my family at ease. However, it was likely that the Carrolls would never have the full story behind their dad's death. According to a medical report, George was murdered and also had signs of trauma caused by a blood instrument on his skull. However, experts said that the impact could have happened after George had already died. While the news of the injuries George had sustained might have shocked some families, the news did not come as a total surprise to Mike. I was told by the psychic it was blunt force trauma. She actually said to me that it was a pipe, that he got hit in the head by a pipe and he was buried alive. He told the New York Post in December 2018. Given the evidence that Mike and his sons had uncovered, the family's hunt for their missing father had morphed into a police homicide inquiry. Commenting on the revelation, Mike later told News 12, There's so many open ends here. There's a story behind the story behind the story. Meanwhile, it was reported that the police would have liked to have interviewed Mike's former stepfather, Richard. However, given the fact that he had recently passed away, they were unable to question him. As a result, Mike kept an open mind on the matter. I'm trying to avoid pointing a finger at this point, he told Newsday. So as the police continued with their investigations, the Carroll family decided not to speculate on what may have happened to George. Instead, they were simply happy to have found him after all that time. I feel great that my dad is finally free from that crappy hole, Mike told Newsday. Besides, given that many people around that time of his father's disappearance had since died, Mike wasn't confident that his dad's murder would be found. There would be no justice, he told the New York Post. The justice happened when we dug him up because we just interrupted the perfect crime. They almost got away with this. By looking at the discovery of his father's remains from this point of view, Mike was able to celebrate the fact that his family finally had some closure. I tell my sons we hit a grand slam in the bottom of the ninth, two outs, he told the New York Post. We found our dad, so we win. It was a sentiment shared by Mike's older brother, Stephen, who had been five years of age when his dad went missing. It just struck me that he's been there the whole time and it's wonderful, he told the New York Post in November 2018. The grandchildren can now say Grandpa was found. However, despite being happy his father's remains had finally been located, Stephen was haunted by the realities of George's final moments. How does something like this happen? He asked in an interview with Newsday. How do you dispose of someone and bury them in the basement and pour concrete over them and nobody knows about it? Even though there were so many questions still to answer, the Carrolls could now start to think about finally putting their father to rest. They hoped to bury him in Kelverton National Cemetery on Long Island, accompanied by a military service. I want him to be a soldier, Mike told WABC. I want him to get what he needs.